Welcome to worship at Peace Lutheran Church. We're so glad that you were able to join us. It is Holy Trinity Sunday. So thank you for joining and let's begin our service.
now the confession and absolution. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and have lived in brokenness and despair. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in the newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now God, who is rich in mercy, loves us and makes us alive in Christ. In the name of Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. May Almighty God strengthen you with the power through the Holy Spirit and move you forward in Christ's love and mercy. Amen. Peace be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty Creator and ever-living God, we worship your glory, eternal three in one, and we praise your power, majestic one in three. Keep us steadfast in this faith, defend us in all adversity, and bring us at last into your presence, where you live in endless love and joy, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Oh, 
Hello, I'm Alan Rakowski, your lecture for today. The Old Testament reading is from the sixth chapter of Isaiah, verses 1 through 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord, high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried, I am ruined. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. And my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. The Gospel according to John, chapter 3, verses 1 through 17. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. And Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, 
And what is born of, of the Spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Today, we celebrate the Trinity, the triune God, the three in one. God the Father, one with the Son, who is with the Spirit. We often refer to the triune God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. John writes in the Gospel reading today that the religious leader Nicodemus comes to Jesus to understand his teachings. From the beginning, we are given a clue that Nicodemus knows there is something special about this man named Jesus, and that there is a relationship between Jesus and God when he says, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. So Nicodemus understands there is a connection. Nicodemus is curious about Jesus, but I can imagine that he comes to Jesus with a sense that he is in the presence of something or someone very special, and he comes to learn. Jesus then goes on to tell Nicodemus that one cannot enter heaven without being born of the water and spirit. Water being of earthly symbol of life and baptism, and the spirit being one with God. It is in this conversation that Jesus is expressing the reality of the triune God, the relationship of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It can catch our, capture our imagination but it can also cause us some confusion. But I do love the imagery of our triune God in relationship, engaging with the world through so many beautiful ways. Nicodemus is able to engage with Jesus directly, to speak with him directly. Nicodemus encounters the Messiah, God with us. All of creation, the beauty and diversity come into being through the words God speaks, and the Holy Spirit of God blows in the winds across the waters. Through the words we speak and the relationships we hold, God is with us and amongst us, and the Spirit is with us and amongst us, and God continues to reach out to us in mercy and love. And relationships are something we can understand. I have personally many relationships, and some are closer than others. Some are complicated. Some bring me great joy, and others, well, just let's say again, they're complicated. I came to think a lot about relationships recently at the funeral of my mother-in-law, Judy. The day had gone as she had wanted. There were a lot of stories about Judy and the family and a fair amount of laughing. It was during the visitation that I came to appreciate how complicated life-giving, and sometimes life-taking relationships can be. During the visitation, there was no receiving line for family like there are many of the visitations you have probably been at. People mingled and talked, looked at pictures, 
Some seem to be content to sit and have deep thoughts. During the visitation, Karen, Katie, and I saw a lot of friends from DeForest, many who had never met Judy, but were there to support us. There were people from places Judy had worked in the past. There were people from American Family Insurance where Karen works. There were people that Katie had gone to high school with. There were people from church, the church Judy had belonged to along many years ago. There were neighbors who had moved away decades ago. There were in-laws, Judy's brother, nieces, nephews, children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. Relationships of every kind were on display at the visitation, and it was beautiful. We all seemed to be one unit, unit united in Judy. When I dig deeper, and a little bit deeper into those relationships, things get a little bit more complicated. I'm sure I could easily confuse poor Nicodemus if he had come to Judy's visitation and I tried to explain everyone and how the relationships came to be in their current state. But in this moment of love and respect, the relationships that were hard or broken were forgotten for a few minutes. Instead, relationships that were strong and full of love for Judy were in full display as we talked and laughed in the moment. It can sometimes be awkward and be an awkward dance that takes place during a time like this. As old grudges can be left at the door for the sake of the family, but the awkward dance nonetheless took place and it seemed less awkward as everyone seemed to remember the reason we were there to honor and remember Judy. I see the triune God in relationship as the three in one, expressing itself to the world, always coming into relationship, no matter how broken we feel or how broken we feel our relationship is with God. The Spirit of God is in the breath of our words and songs. It is in the quiet of our eternal struggles and prayers. Our lives are intertwined with the divine majesty of love of our God. Ancient writers of the Old Testament sometimes had a hard time describing God's being. And authors today sometimes refer to human relationships or moments of awe to point to God. Jesus, the Word of God made flesh, and the Holy Spirit, the very breath of God passed onto the world, provides us an understanding of the relationship that God has with us and all creation. It is in John's words that God comes to us, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. This is how God loves us, that God, the Holy Other, comes to us in human flesh, feels the sting of death, but through the power of the Spirit is resurrected through God's promise. We hold to the power of the resurrection for all creation. It is the good news that our triune God is with us, in relationship with us, no matter how complicated, always and forever. Amen. Come before the triune God in prayer. And let's take a moment of silence. 
We pray, O oh God, for your holy church around the world. Revitalize and renew us, that we may be reborn once again through the waters of baptism and the blowing wind of your spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We give thanks for your power revealed to us in creation, for cedar and oak trees, for rushing waters, for the echoes of thunder. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for the nations and our leaders that led by your spirit, they work towards a world where all your children enjoy peace. We pray especially for nations currently experiencing war or turmoil. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for the healing of all those who suffer, especially victims and survivors of trauma and violence. Give respite to those living with PTSD or any other mental health concerns. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for this worshiping community, that the splendor of your majesty and the holiness of your mystery may be glorified through our worship and our relationships with one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We give you thanks, O God, for those who have died in their faith, for the family of Sean and Kirsten Ziegler, and the Onsager family, with the death of Kirsten's mother, Susan Rood. For Terry Parker and family, with the death of his wife, Mary Parker. For Tom and Karen Kreiss and family, with the death of Karen's mother, Judy Harp. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always and also with you. This is the point when we remember that our congregation gathered for celebration of Holy Communion. We heard again the story of God's mighty acts and of the love shown us in the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. With thanksgiving, we remember that in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread and gave thanks and gave it to all his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. We are given assurance of our Lord's presence through the gifts of his Holy Spirit. Now we bring to you the same bread of life and the same cup of blessing that you may be strengthened through your participating in the body of Christ. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. Now please join me in the Lord, in the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So this is the part of the service, to communion, that you would take the bread, and take whatever you have to drink. And remember that the body and blood of Christ are given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. And now the communion blessing. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace now and forever. Amen. And now receive the benediction. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord's face shine upon us and be gracious to us. May the Lord look upon us with favor and give us peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you.
shining sea. Oh, beautiful, for heroes prone in liberating strife. Who more than self the country love than mercy? Success be no less than every gain divine. <clears throat> oh, beautiful for patriot dream that sees beyond my years. Thy alabaster cities gleam. Self-control, my liberty.